Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and today we're going to discuss the short run aggregate supply curve, why it is upward sloping. So the short run aggregate supply curve, as we see abbreviated here, is applicable only to the monetarist model, not to the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, which has a completely different shape. So in the mantras model, there is a distinction between the short run and the long run. So let's focus on what is the short run in the mantrist model. The short run in the mantras model, within the context of macroeconomics, is a period of time when the prices of resources are constant. Prices of factors of production are essentially not changing. So let's remember what are these resources. So resources are the inputs that are used in the production of some type of output. Resources are inputs essentially, which are factors of production. And we categorize the factors of production into number one, land resources, that are naturally occurring, capital resources, which are essentially like tools that are not naturally occurring, that humans create, tools, equipment, machinery, labor resources, and for the entrepreneur that organizes the land, the labor, and the capital. All right, now let's also recall that these four resources or factors of production generate different types of income. So we're gonna look at income that's generated through the offering of these factors of production by the household and land that's offered by the household for production generates a type of income called rent. Capital that's offered by the household generates a type of income called interest. Labor that's offered by the household generates a wage or wages. And the entrepreneur that's organizing the land, the labor, the capital resources to produce some type of output is rewarded by earning profit. Okay. So let's take a look. In very similar to microeconomics, we have a firm or the aggregate of all firms in the macro economy. And let's say you wanna produce a quantity of output at, we'll label this Y1, all right? We're measuring real GDP on the X axis. Real GDP is equal to spending, which in theory is equal to income. And the symbol for income in macroeconomics is Y. So let's say you wanna produce a quantity of outputs at Y1. So you're gonna to have to employ resources. Let's say that the S1 curve is the land resources. All right, and so you're gonna incur at point A, a cost that is called rent, All right? So the distance between point A and the X axis is the rent that you're paying to employ land resources. So you're using some uh, naturally occurring resources to produce some type of output. In addition, you might need some capital resources. So if you employ capital resources, that's going to incur additional costs to the aggregate of all firms. So the distance from point B to point A is interest payments as a cost of production. And in addition, you're going to have to hire some labor resources. So in order to produce, let's say at point C, you're going to incur additional cost of production, which is wages paid to the workers that you're employing. So we can see that at Y1, you have the costs of land resources from the X axis up to point A, which is your rent. You're going to employ some capital resources which is the distance from point A to point B, which is interest payments. And you're also gonna employ units of labor, 
and pay wages, which is another cost of production. And so the sum of S1, S2, and the labor resources becomes your short run aggregate supply curve. We will assume that all firms in the macro economy are employing la land capital and labor resources. And as a result, the sum of all those costs of production becomes the SRES curve. So here we have the land resources, the capital resources, plus the labor resources. These are inputs. These are inputs. And that's used to create the output that households will consume, right, at the SRES curve. So the SRES curve is the sum, it is the outputs that are being produced in the macro economy, which is the sum of the employment of all of the inputs the land, the capital, and the labor resources. Now this is going to be important to understand the determinants of the SRES curve, which we'll discuss in, in just a moment. So if that's the case, why is it that the SRES curve is upward sloping? Right? The SRES is upward sloping because we see that there is a positive or a direct relationship, there's a positive relationship between the price level, which is the price on average of all outputs produced in the macro economy, and the quantity of outputs produced and real GDP. All right, we see that these two move in the same direction. So as the price level rises, from the perspective of all firms in the economy, they are motivated to increase production and vice versa. If the price level falls, then they're disincentivized to produce and they will reduce the quantity of aggregate supply. SRS is upward sloping because there is a positive relationship between the price level and real GDP. Why is that? All right. Again, we're seeing that the firm is owned by the entrepreneur and the entrepreneur is driven by profit. So let's take a look. Okay. Let's say that the price level is here. Here's the price level currently in the economy for all of these outputs. At PL1, the firm will increase their quantity of aggregate supply from zero to Y1. So they're moving along their SRES curve, employing land, capital, and labor resources. And as they employ these resources, their marginal costs of production are increasing until they produce at point C. Now, very similar to microeconomics, if this is the price that firms are charging and the SRS curve are their costs of production, then the price minus the cost leaves us with profit, right? Very simply stated. So imagine you are the entrepreneur you're producing from zero units up to Y1 units in the macro economy. Your costs of production are rising as you employ more units of land, capital, and labor. And you stop at point C and charge the output price of PL1. So price minus costs equals profit. The price of the product that you're charging and sell it at minus the cost of production equals the firm's profit or the profit earned by the entrepreneur. Okay, price is another word for revenue. Revenue minus costs equals profit. Okay, so what happens when the price level rises? Does it motivate the firm to produce more? We'll see that, yes. 
Let's, so let's say that the price level rises to this point, PL2. We should expect that the aggregate all, of all firms would be motivated to increase their costs, uh, to increase their output from, let's say, Y1 to Y2. Why is that? Well, if they increase their production from Y1 to Y2, yes, they're increasing the quantity of aggregate supply and their marginal costs of production are rising because they have to employ more land resources, capital resources, and labor resources. They're going from point C to point D. What happens to their profit? This is the price that they're charging. These are their costs. We expect their profit to rise with it. So if the shaded area, oops, if the sh original shaded area here was the original profit margin of the firm producing at PL1 with the quantity at Y1, then we see that the firm's profit margin increases as the price level increases. Okay, so if we number this, let's say that this is, uh, let's choose this. This area is A and this area is B. We see that the entrepreneur's profit at PL1 is equal to the area A, which is the blue triangular area. And then we see that the profit for the entrepreneur at a price level of PL2 is A plus B. So it increases. The profit for the entrepreneur rises as the price level rises. So they are encouraged to increase production from point C to point D. Use, let's say from point C to point D because their profit is increasing and vice versa. If the price level was to fall from PL2 to PL1, then the entrepreneur would be discouraged to maintain production at point D or Y2 and would reduce the quantity of aggregate supply from point D to point C or from Y2 back to Y1. So again, we see that there is a positive relationship between the price level and the quantity of aggregate supply uh, that makes the SRAS curve upward sloping. All right, hopefully that becomes clear. Now also keep in mind, like we said, in the short run, resource prices are constant. So wages, interest, rent are relatively constant. If the price level is increasing above the constant wage, interest, rent prices, then the profit's going up if the price level is rising and vice versa. If the price level falls, then the firm would decrease the quantity of aggregate supply to maximize their profit at PL1. All right, so that's uh, the explanation of why the SRAS curve is upward sloping because there's a direct relationship between the price level, real GDP, and the profit generated by the entrepreneur. The profit, the rising profit as price level rises encourages the entrepreneur to increase the quantity of aggregate supply. In the next video, we're going to look at the determinants of SRS. What causes the SRS curve to shift outward and inward? If you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.